All right. So the, we've been we talked about this happening for a few years and uh, just haven't got it done and put it together. And I said, Gabe, let's, we need to do this. And we get a lot of requests. One of our better tennis parents, I don't see him here. I won't point him out. But, but I end up talking to him in the clinic and I'm asking him this and I'm asking him that. And his daughter plays a lot of tournaments and he doesn't understand. And he's been doing this for like a year and, and he has a, an MBA. And I'm thinking, I'm a PE major and if I understand this and don't know it all, how is somebody with an MBA that hasn't been through it all understanding and, and knowing what's going on either? And as I ask him questions, he doesn't have the answers. He goes, oh, I didn't know that. And I, go, I know. Gabe and I went to a Midwest meeting uh, about a month ago, and we're sitting in this meeting, and the Midwest people are here doing a, a workshop for us. And they're trying to educate us. And we're going, Chad, how come our students come to us and say something and we don't know that that's going on until one of our students said, oh, those tournaments now are 115 points if you win the tournament. And we're going, what? We look at each other, and it changed in January. And Midwest does not do a great job, and I'll say it to Chad, I said it to him at the meeting, how are we supposed to tell you, or how are you supposed to ever be able to pick that up without somebody telling us that we know what's going on? So. We, we've gained some more information and we feel that that's important for you. If you go to the blog now, there's a link to this sheet so you can get the links off. This. So anybody wants to go there and have that, that address. Expectation for parents. Uh, things that we're interested in trying to see from you. Probably this one's a great one. Your child's success or lack of success in sports does not indicate what kind of parent you are. <laughs> Just remember that. But having an athlete that is coachable, respectful, a great teammate, mentally tough, resilient, and tries their best is a direct reflection of your parenting. Where did that come from? A club know, somewhere. It was hanging somewhere. Yeah. yeah, it was hanging at a club. We stole it. One, one of the other great ones I have is coaching and parenting is not a sport in tennis. And as we have been to so many tournaments and I've been doing this since my son went all the way through. It's amazing what parents say, well, we play again at one o'clock. And if you say that, I'll laugh, I'll smile, but it's probably we don't play at one o'clock. Probably your child plays at one o'clock, but you're probably not gonna play. And as we've learned as coaches over the years, we probably don't affect what's happening out there as much as we would like to think we do. It's probably more about them. And one of the keys that we're looking for is the development of your children to be able to coach their self. Because when they get out there and they play a, a match in two sets, they're not gonna get any coaching. If they go three, they're gonna get some coaching and it might be three minutes. And in three minutes we can have an egg, but I don't know whether we can coach them enough to win that match. Positive interaction and support is what we're looking for from parents. What What is your role? Our view of your role is you are their number one cheerleader. And again, my son, I coached him probably until he was 15. And at that point, I realized I needed to be his dad and not his coach. Because whatever I said to his buddy who was the same age, that went over fine. But when I said it to him, I was his dad talking. I could not become his coach. He could not separate me being his coach. So. When he asked me, I told him. When we went out and hit, sometimes it lasts five minutes. And I go, you done? He goes, yeah. And I would just go, let's go. And we would go home. It took me a long time to figure that out. I, I you know, and trying to coach your child is one of the most difficult things you will ever do, believe me. And my son was a pretty good player, but he couldn't separate that part. And I'd listen to other kids and Sometimes they're very disrespectful to their parents that I have, and I'd like to slap them if they were my kid, and I wouldn't. But I would like to at least let them know, and I have a couple times, I go, that's not appropriate. And, you know, it's terrible how much opportunity they give the kids, but how much sometimes you as a parent, you don't know anything. And it's one of the things I've learned over the years, as a parent, I know nothing. And now my son still tells me I know nothing, but that's okay. We would like to see you communicate. 
How many of you have a private coach that works with your child? If you don't, we're here in the groups. We'll be glad to interact and help you go through that. We'll be glad to answer any questions you got. You do not have to take private lessons to get our knowledge or to be to ask us to take care of something that you need help with. We are here in the groups for everyone. And I hope you feel that all the coaches treat everybody equally because that's Gabe and our goal as a club to be able to do that, that nobody feels left out. And many times I end up spending much more time with the kids that I don't coach in the clinics because sometimes I feel they don't get something that I feel they should need and maybe they can't afford lessons, maybe they don't want to take private lessons or whatever the situation is. It doesn't matter. We still want everybody to be as successful as they want to be. Parent is not a coach. Input in a way um, a child behaves and competes. Our three goals and kids, what we're trying to get out of them are attitude, effort, and organization. We, our number one goal for all of our kids is making it fun. Because if we don't make it fun, we will never make it an accomplishment. Once we make it fun, then we can make it an accomplishment. One of the most fun things for us is to see all the college kids that are now back in town. And we have a policy, once you graduate from our program and you, you want to come back, you can come to every clinic anytime during the summer now. And these kids are back now, and yesterday, they were talking about how good the clinic was. Yeah, we had like three or four college kids yesterday, and then Mike and I were like, why isn't it like this every day? And I don't know, because, but yeah, it's a lot of fun when they come back. And they bring so much energy. They're, they're such positive kids. They're, I mean, we have so many great kids that have been through this program, and, and over the 17, 18 years, I look back at the kids that have gone through here, and, and I, I'm, I'm teaching a lesson one day last week, and this mom goes, hey, Linda Watson here. I go... Hi, and I'm like thinking, Linda Watson, Linda Watson. She goes, yeah, you remember you're my son? And I go, oh my gosh. And here he is now getting married this summer. And I'm like, oh, geez. And he played number one for UA. And it's like, wow. And you go back and you think, oh, your son was a great kid. What another great kid that I had in my program over the years and that. And it's, it's just so much fun to go back and, and look at those kids and what they've become over the years. We encourage work ethic, positive attitude, finding a joy in the sport. Some of our kids have trouble finding joy out there, and the number one reason they can't find that joy is because they're not winning. And as we say, 50% of everybody that plays tennis today will lose. And it's like, if you're looking at just winning, you're probably not gonna have a good time as many times in tennis as you would if you find some other goals to, to reach. Wanna go to the next one, go to the uh, tournaments? Yep. So this is in this packet. I won't go through. I'll go through it quick because half of you probably already know this. But if you if you're newer to tournaments, you can just Google. It's called Tennis Link, and our district's called Ohio Valley. So you just go to the drop down box section Midwest District Ohio Valley. You can search the month. If you want to type in a keyword, you can type Columbus. But the problem with that is you're going to miss like Elysiums in Plain City or. Um, stuff like that so you can find there's there's probably I mean there's very few weekends where there's not a local tournament for at least one age group Lyceum has a couple months Wicker Tree has a couple Scarborough has plenty so and in the summer there's even more it's called COGP so they run one every week I believe so there's opportunities to play there's plenty of opportunities to play in the summer and throughout the year a couple years ago there weren't as many opportunities but there's another, there's a USTA app also that you can go in and it comes up when you push it, it comes up, find a tournament. And then under find a tournament, you can go through the same things. You can search for a shortcut. You can do adult, junior, age group, the month, the city, the state. How, however, you could do the state of Ohio and yep. that would take care of all, that would pick up the Elysium tournament. Lexington has tournaments. It's like an hour north of here. So if you do Ohio Valley, that's not gonna show you Lexington. Where, uh, but you, the starting times are going to be on there. I just got attacked by somebody because it said that the starting time was at four or six, but then I changed it this morning to the to starting times at six. So if you, you sometimes you have to check. Like, oh, oh with, I'm like, well, it's set six for like eight hours. But and so the if other you have a question, is, call the club. 
or call wherever you're playing. But usually all the info is going to be posted on there. So, so Tennis Link is your source, or you can get that app and you can find a lot of local tournaments. Um, Gabe and I have been talking. Um, we have this big dead time in the summer uh, and Saturday afternoons. We're going to start running one day tournaments, like a compass draw, so that all age groups can come and play. Um, I asked the owner, I go, do you have a problem if we stayed open on Saturday afternoon and made money for you? And he said, well, no, why would I have a problem with that? Well, because somebody once told me we didn't have anybody to work the desk. And like, we as pros don't want to work seven days a week in the, in the summer because I work seven, most of them work six, and Gabe's still in here on his seventh day. It's like, we need to get away from it a little bit. And the other part is, we grind hard. We probably work more hours in the summer on the court because we go from eight in the morning till maybe nine o'clock at night. Gabe does, I know, a lot of nights. So we are going to start running these tournaments and we're going to run all different levels in that. And, and it's pretty simple. You play one day and you're done. You come in the afternoon and we got 10 indoor courts and like they're sitting there, why aren't we using them? So that's one of our goals. And one of the things we're going to get into is, is why is that important? If you play a one day tournament that, like that and win it, you can win the same number of points as if you went to Cleveland and played a three day tournament and come out of it winning that tournament. So we can now offer points and you don't have to go anywhere. And USDA is trying to push this back that you can play at home and go to this level. After that, now you gotta start going to Wisconsin and Chicago and Michigan and crazy places and have one kid going to Wisconsin, one kid going to Michigan, and you as parents deciding, okay, well, I'm going here and they're going there. And, and it's amazing what some of our parents do. Yeah, I, sh I shake my head. It's like, yeah, it's-, it's but, but probably the best kid from our club, Kevin Mecca, played Ohio State, didn't, probably didn't play, you know, he played the Midwest closed, played the Midwest Open, played like two or three Midwest designated, never played a national tournament, I don't think. Uh, national, you know, we played a national open if it's three hours away. So it's you don't you don't have to drive around the world. You can if you want. So. It becomes a chasing points. Some people have a tendency to try and buy their way in. It, if you go to one tournament and you win it, you probably have enough points to carry you for a long way. And if you have what we what we're looking for is everybody to have six tournament scores, and your six tournament scores is how many points you got for whatever place you were in that tournament. The maximum for local tournaments now is 115 points. They used last year, this changed in January. On December, if you won that same tournament, you got 44 points. In January, you win the same tournament, you win 115 points. But USDA is trying to get people to stay at home and play their local. So if you, the goal of all of our students locally would be get six wins, of tournaments, six times 115 points, that's gonna put you in a pretty good place for a Midwest ranking. Now, once you get those six 115s, now you gotta start looking for tournaments that are 200 points, 150 points. And the most you can ever have is your top six scores. That's what your standing end of the year would be, your ranking would be, is how many points you have, because it's points per round. Go ahead. Yeah. So, and I one lady asked, well, "Why do I? I don't really need to play. My kid's not really good enough to play college tennis." Well, one, there's l multiple levels of college tennis. So, you're playing on a high school team. There's a college you could play on. So, there's, there's a lot of really good schools around here. If you're a guy versus a girl, um, a lot of the best guys in the country go play D3 because there isn't as much money in D1. But why you would play one a lot of people's goals is to play on their middle school or high school team you're only really getting 15 matches there maybe more but you prepare for that by playing matches up until that so a lot of schools they would they would encourage their kids or force their kids you're going to play you know some some teams you're not really making the team if you don't play a lot of matches beforehand some teams you're you're going to play number one regardless are you um, saying high school yeah but so our number one goal of all of our kids, and since I came to Columbus, it took me a while to figure it out, maybe about a week. Why do kids play tennis in Columbus? It's because of high school tennis. That is their number one goal, right? Jack, it's to make the UA, and sometimes schools like UA, it's been very difficult over the years to make the team, then to make the B team, or let alone try and make the A team. 
And that's their goal. 